Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be answering a few questions concerning mail art and custom envelopes that I've received quite often over the last couple of years on my YouTube channel. So these are things that I haven't been able to address all in one video or haven't had the opportunity to. And I'm going to just answer the questions while I kind of talk you through these four envelope designs. So for this first envelope, I'm using a metallic envelope from Simon Says Stamp. I'm also using a chrome marker from Molotov, or Molotov, I don't know how to say it. And this is the one millimeter size. I'm using a Lettermate template, and you can buy this at Simon or other various online shops, and it just helps you when you're addressing your envelopes. So one of the most common questions I get about mail art is, can you really send that through the mail? Will it really get to its destination? And the answer is yes. I have done a lot of these envelopes over the years, ever since I was, gosh, 16 or 17 years old. These um, envelopes that have calligraphy or lettering on them or different colors of envelopes or things like that, I've tried a bunch of different things over the years, and absolutely, they can go through the mail. Now, your experience can vary depending on your local post office. Some post offices are a little bit more strict, and they will require you to be very, very diligent in following their rules. However, in my experience, as long as the address is legible and it can be read, it will be delivered. Now, you also have to make sure you have the correct postage, and I'll talk about um, how to determine how much postage to put on your envelope. I'll talk about that at the end of this video. For this next envelope, I'm using the Lettermate uh, template again, but I've switched to a different pen and some different ink. This is an oblique pen holder from Ash Bush, and she makes beautiful oblique pen holders, um, or even straight pen holders, it depends on what type you want. Um, this is an oblique pen holder, meaning that it has that kind of L-shaped bend in the tip, or where you uh, put the tip of the pen. And I'm also using some black ink from Lara Hooper, and she has a calligraphy class at her website, and she's also been involved in some other classes online, and I actually ended up taking a class from her a while back and ordered her ink, and I really do love her ink. It flows extremely well. I really like it. This envelope is also from Simon Says Stamp. So when it comes to fancy lettering like that, you can definitely send that through the mail. There's no problem with that. You just really wanna make sure your um, address is legible. For this third envelope, I'm using some Strathmore watercolor envelopes. Now these envelopes come in a set with the actual watercolor note cards. And I had never tried a really heavy wash on these envelopes. I wanted to give it a try. Now I really loved how it looked. The watercolors really flowed across this envelope. They look beautiful. I like the texture of the paper they've used. My one complaint is that the, the paper is quite thin. And you'll notice later on in the video that you can definitely tell that there was lots of warping and buckling in the paper after it dried. Now, I don't know if taping this down to my work surface would have helped. It may have helped a little bit, but honestly, this paper is so thin, I don't know that it would have really helped that much. If I was to redo this envelope, I would use my own watercolor paper and create a custom envelope using the envelope punch board or you can do what I'm doing with this fourth envelope, which is start with some watercolor paper and then later adhere it to an already made envelope. So I've moved on to some watercolors, um, or these are the same ones I used on the previous envelope. These are some Windsor & Newton watercolor paints that I put into a palette. I'm using a few different brushes. Um, on that last envelope, I used a brush from Silver Brush, and then this brush here is from Royal and Langnickel from their Zen line. And um, you can do a bunch of different techniques with all of these brushes. I thought it would just be fun to paint some flowers and some leaves. The other really common question that I get on my YouTube channel that I want to answer in this video is, how do you protect your envelope while it's going through the mail? What if it gets wet? Will it destroy my project? 
Um, over the years, I've tried a few different things. I've used um, microglaze or distress microglaze, which puts like a coating over your envelope and prevents any moisture from damaging your water projects. However, over the last, I would say six months or so, I've stopped putting any protection on my envelopes because I realized that any moisture that would destroy my project would probably destroy the entire envelope no matter what. So I've stopped with that step. Um, my envelopes have been received by the recipients without much problem. Um, the only time I've ever had an envelope get wet was when I sent a card to Hawaii and they, this person had bought the card. And so I had I had wrapped the card in a cello bag, in a cellophane bag, and then put it in a mailer. And the mailer was dropped in the water or something and it was destroyed, but the cello bag had protected the card inside. Now for just a regular everyday card, I don't think you're going to be putting it into a cello bag when you, um, when you mail it. So in that case, if it would have been a regular piece of mail, it would have destroyed the entire thing no matter what. So that's sort of when I came to my realization with that. Okay, for this last uh, two kind of addressing envelopes, I'm using a tool from We Are Memory Keepers. This is a laser square tool. Um, I can't remember the exact name of what they call this, but I'll have it listed down in the supply section below. And I'm also using this um, marker from Pentel. This is one of their sign pens with a brush tip and I'm just using the black shade. Now I'm using this tool because I wanted to have a nice straight line going across these envelopes but I didn't want to have to use a pencil and draw it on. So this laser puts a nice straight line all the way across and you can move that little blue triangle piece on the side up and down and adjust where the lines are. Um, for this last one, I'm going back to that pen holder from Ash Bush, and I'm going to do a very similar um, calligraphy style that I did before. This is just going to be written quite a bit smaller since it's a smaller section on the envelope. So the very last thing I wanted to address with this video is determining how much postage to put on your envelope. And a lot of that has to do with the size of envelope, the weight of the envelope, and also um, if it is machinable. And when a piece of mail is machinable, it means that it can go through um, kind of like the, kind of like, I'm like, almost like I'm picturing an, a machine that kind of scans the envelopes and it reads the words on the envelope and then it can sort the mail really quickly. If your envelope is unmachinable because it's too thick, it's too large, if it's square because it goes through, um, it could turn and go through the wrong direction, or if you've written your address at an angle, or if you've written the address where the envelope is portrait instead of landscape, any of those things can make your envelope non-machinable. So if you have any doubt about your envelope going through the machines and having it being read, you're going to be hit with a 20 cent surcharge. Now this is only for the US Postal Service. In other countries, it may work differently. But if you're in the US, you're going to come across a surcharge for envelopes like that. So for this bronze envelope right here, it does have a metallic finish. And I also use that chrome marker that has a reflective aspect to it. So I knew it was going to be non-machinable. So I put an extra stamp on here. It's another 26 cents. And that's going to help it get to New Jersey and make sure it gets there without any problems. And so also on that um, one going to Canada, I put two stamps because I looked up online how much a first class piece of mail would cost to get to Canada. And it said that it was just under a dollar and forever stamps right now are worth 50 cents a piece. So I put two forever stamps on that envelope. So it's a dollar and should cover any extra postage needed. For this last one going to Australia, I used a bunch of vintage stamps and I just made sure that when those stamp, um, values were added up that it was enough to get to Australia and I figured that out by also googling I, I just looked up first class postage from US to Australia and it said that it was a, around a dollar to send that 
So if you have any questions about how much postage to put on your envelopes, if you really want to make sure your, your uh, mail gets to the recipient, you can take it to your local post office and have them measure it and weigh it, and they will let you know how much extra postage you need. Or even if it's not legible at all, they will advise you to put it into a separate envelope with just um, a regular address on the front. Hope that answers a lot of your questions. I will be back very soon with another regular card video. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.